Selecting which colours to use can be very difficult sometimes when you're trying to work out what you're going to need. You don't want too many paints out, otherwise it gets too messy. So try and limit it to the amount you just need for this one job. What I've done in this particular case, this is the original picture that I'm going to be working on. As you see, it's got nice blue skies, big cloud, rocks, there's a figure in the foreground, and you've got mountains at the back, some of them just covered in trees. One of the ways to do this, I've found, is first of all, I select the colours I'm going to use. And I've put those in the tray at the top, but what I've also done is I've written down in order the name of the colours. The reason for that is because when I come back to it tomorrow there's a good chance I'll forget what I've used. <coughs> Some of that is a health issue I have, so. but many of you might find the same thing. For your information here we've got from the left permanent rows. We've then got lemon yellow. Then there's phthalo green, then there's sap green, burnt sienna, raw sienna, cerulean blue, and phthalo blue. Now what I've done is I've been looking at the original picture, which is here, and at the various colours that I'll need for it. Now you can see there's some very deep reddy browns, some very dark browns, some almost orange. The, the sea is generally a blue, although the original picture has got a hint of green in it. This is just the print. For the figure we've got dark blue and a lighter blue and a few shades of green. For the background sky we've got a light blue with a few dark patches, obviously fading out to the clouds, with possibly a hint of grey. Then for the hills behind we've got blue, we've got very pale orangey browns, and for the trees we've got a variety of greens which if you look there you can see dark green, light green and a bit of shading in there of in between colours. So what I've done here and this is nothing clever I wrote the names of the colours across the top just so I knew what was in the tray and what I've been doing as I've been mixing colours as I've gone this is before I ever start painting and what I've been doing is grouping them together so it will say the name of the colour or colours and a couple of mixes I got with that colour with different strengths. These are generally all the colours I need for this picture. It's nothing fancy, it doesn't look very pretty and it's not very big. If you consider there's the paint tray it's only a small piece of watercolour paper, but it is textured. On top of that, you've probably noticed on the table I've got a few colour charts that I've painted in the past for various things. But they weren't a match to what I really needed for this job, so this is an individual job. Other than that on the table, we've got there's a steel rule down there, my pencil, my brushes in my the mount I've made for them. These are some Rosemary and Co. Pure Red Sable brushes that I've just purchased. I moved up from the old brushes I started with, and they've still got the covers on. And I've used a few of these already in an earlier picture. This is the earlier picture I did with the I used the one, the three, and the five brushes. The ones I've purchased at the moment is one through to nine, all nine brushes. 
So this is, if you're uh, a history buff, Audrey Hepburn, or my configuration of Audrey Hepburn, based on a painting I saw. So you see, I've used the light brushes, the new brushes, should I say, the sable brushes, and I have found them extremely smooth. It took me a few moments to get used to them being so smooth, following the harder, cheaper brushes I've started with when I started painting a couple of years ago. So, that's what I did. That's not on a textured paper, that's more of a flat white paper. So there you go, that's what I did with those brushes. So going back to my general table, which looks like a mess, yes, this is the dining room table. I am. That was one of my other palettes, I decided not to use that palette, I'm using this one which is a uh, general purpose, nothing expensive, suits me for what I use. And this is a plastic tray I use. Um, funnily enough, I use this a lot without using the palette, especially for mixing when I'm doing small detailing. And this is what I've been using while I was mixing up the colours for this chart which I showed you earlier. The other things on the table, obviously my paints, uh, a mixture really. There's one Winsor Newton professional in there, an ultramarine blue. There's cotton colours, uh, a few Dela Rownies and there is some Devron paints. Oh, I've also got a very cheap titanium white which I've used for snow and some other paintings. Other than that, the oddball paint charts and a few clipboard with a few bits and pieces in that I've done when I've been working out colours in the past. The usual two jam jars. I've actually just been using these, so that's hence you can tell the dirty one, the green water. This is a gem. I love this. This is a baby bottle. Now, people think, what the hell do you use a baby bottle for? Well, watch this. Okay? Look at the paint. This is dry. I just give it a little smidging. Grab the brush. Grab the brush. And there we go. Oh, I had blue on the... See, I didn't clean that. Naughty, naughty. But you see, that just brings your paint back up. And also, if you wanted to, you could put a little drop of water in these. Very handy in the bag if you're working outside too, because you can tip it upside down, it won't matter. So I do find that handy. The brushes, as I said, these are the new brushes. That's my drink of water. I have been known to accidentally put my brush in it <laughs> before now. And these, as it happened, are my new Sable brushes are from Rosemary & Co. This is the larger one and I made this myself, the wood base. This is, I'll hold that to the window, you might see the profile better. Oh no, it's probably a bit, bit bright. I'll put it over there. So that is a red sable. It's a proper red sable. That's a size 9. As I said, these run through one to nine. I don't use them for mixing my paints. I use a cheaper brush. Um, and that shouldn't be sitting in the water. The other thing I've got that probably all of you have got is the old dirty rag, which used to be a, t a tea towel. But after years of use and washing, it was getting a bit thin. And it did have multiple colours, you can probably see. <laughs> It's got a few paint marks on it, and yeah, it does get a wash occasionally. So there. So we'll come back to this when I've started doing some of the painting. But I just thought you would find this interesting. The one colour I didn't actually put in that top tray, which I will be using, and if you look in this corner, you can see it there, is Payne's Grey. Because Payne's Grey is very good for darkening, I find. In fact, that blue there, on the tray, the dark one, is a phthalo blue with Payne's Grey. So you see, 
that is an extra colour, but I don't use a lot of it, and I don't tend to leave it on the main tray, on the main palette. So, we'll see how this goes. Well, here we are now. I'm in the process of painting, you'll see. Um, this is where I've got to at the moment. I've been painting for about an hour, three quarters of an hour. And I have to say, I'm very impressed with the new brushes. These are the Rosemary & Co. Sables. And also the pad, which I'm using, which is a Langton, which it's a Langton pad, which many of you have probably seen before. It's the first time I've used one. Um, so it is very impressive, the paper. I'm surprised how far I've got so quickly. Coming back to the painting. I've actually been, just been putting in the raw sienna across the bottom, which will be the rocks. Which you'll probably notice. Excuse the camera straps. Probably notice there. So that'll be where the rocks are. As I've been painting it, I've painted from here actually. I'm sitting here when I'm painting. So what I've done is I've actually painted it upwards as I've gone with this, rather than across like that. I've painted this way. You can see where I've left the space of the figurine. I started off with a light wash of cerulean blue with a little bit of pea blue, uh, phthalo blue. Um, did the sky with it, dragging the brush over. So this was dry paper. Um, this is the sky as it's drying out. I've had a little bit of darkened, put a little bit more phthalo blue in and darkened it slightly in one or two spaces. I've taken it down to where the mountain tops would be, or the hilltops, which is the green area here and the uh, bluey and uh, beige area. Then I moved down to where the water line would be, and I put the water in next. Now the water I've darkened with a bit more pea blue, phthalo blue. Um, on the original picture there's a hint of green around this area, green and yellow. So I've just added a little bit of green and yellow in there, see how that comes out when it's dry. And I've just used the C, uh, raw sienna at the moment. I will be darkening the raw sienna in parts to start giving the rock image, but at the moment it's more like um, a local wash, if you like. In the um, wells, that is um, raw sienna with a little bit of pea rose, permanent rose, and that's raw sienna with a bit of phthalo green to give that sort of greeny beige. This one will give the redder area, which will be this sort of colour, the darker colours, the reddy colours, on the rock there. And then I'll probably mix some burnt sienna, possibly a bit of pea red, um, permanent rose should I say, not pea red, permanent rose, to get that darker reddy brown. And I'll darken up to get the rest of the rocks. Um, I will be working on the dark green soon for the trees as well. So we'll see how it goes. But at the moment, this is where we're up to. Uh, you can probably see where I've been washing water up. These are only two jam jars I use all the time. Excuse the labels on them, I never bother taking them completely off. So, this is the situation. That's how the painting's going at the moment. Hope you're liking it. I'll take you back to the front. Here we go. So the raw sienna is still wet, and the sea is still just that bit damp, not dried out yet. The green part I've only just added before the raw sienna so you can see where that's wetter. So we'll see what it looks like when it dries out. Okay, bye. So you can see now where I'm working on the rocks. Those on the left which are this sort of red image. And just working on the dark ones at the moment and I have just done a bit of lining in for that um, stick, the rod, because the thing is 
that's an important part of the picture because it funnily enough gives you the angle of that rock where the figure's sitting. So that's where we're up to at the moment. It's coming on. I'm very pleased with it. All right. I've been doing a bit more detailing. I've taken the rocks in down this edge. A combination really of burnt umber, phthalo blue, a bit of sap green, some permanent rose and raw sienna. Uh, sorry, it was uh, burnt sienna, not burnt umber. And I've also done some of the green now for the trousers and I've done the boots on the figure. Which probably just about make those out. <coughs> so it's beginning to take shape and as the paint's drying off we're getting a nice glow on that rock on the left hand side and the darker part just still under the body. Okay so that's where we're up to at the moment and I'm giving it a break for today and I'll come back to it tomorrow. Bye for now. Alright, so we're on the next day and I've made a start already. I started de detailing in the figure. You probably notice. It's on the t-shirt, arms, part of the head and the hat. I'm reducing the width of the t-shirt so I've just lifted some of the colour out as I made a mistake on that so that will become part of the sea later on. And what I've also started to doing, I've started giving a bit of the, see the yellow there in the hills so I'm using a little bit of raw sienna in that top part which is there and there and I'm putting that in across the top there and across to there with just a little bit of permanent rose in this part just to give that pinky finish that's there. And we'll detail that in a bit heavier and the same for the other parts before we get on to the trees below. So it's coming on okay. Right what we've done now is we've actually darkened in if you look over here we've got the hills there at the background which are a yellow or if you like um, a sort of light sienna colour with blue and a bit of pink in. So what I've done is I've given it a bit of blue it's a mixture of phthalo blue and a little bit of cerulean blue and a touch of permanent rose to give that pinky blue look. This is still wet at the moment and then just so we don't get too carried away where the borders are I've used a little bit of phthalo green with a mixture of lemon yellow just down here to give this foreground of the trees which is there which will be darkened up and detailed later but we need to get the profile in. So coming away from it we've gone from there to there. So that's where we're up to at the moment. Now as we're looking here now, you can see the tree area that I'm working on and this is where I've darkened it in. What I'm using is, I use phthalo green and a little bit of phthalo blue to darken it up. I've used a bit of cerulean blue in there as well and I've used some sap green. I've also used a bit of Payne's grey so this gives us texture. I've splayed the brush end of my pointed say, red sable number no. 7 rosemary and co brush and that's given me a little bit if you look carefully you'll see where I've come down it gives you little uprights which gives the impression of trees going up um, not perfect but hey I'm not uh, I'm not a very good painter I've only been painting about 4 or 5 years so that's where we're up to now this is just slow work I have to take my glasses off when I do it because I can't do close up with my glasses on so it's a slow process but we are getting there. I oh, hope you're liking this as we're going.
and I'll get back to painting. Thank you. As you can probably see now, I've been doing a bit more of the detailing. I've moved across from the trees, dark trees, and I've been doing some of the mountain at the back, which is generally there on the original picture. Again, I'm using raw sienna, a little touch of burnt sienna, it's permanent rose, and a touch of phthalo blue, and a little bit of Page grey. Also, I've sneaked in just a little hint of lemon yellow just to brighten up areas. And I've worked back to where we were before and I've put some lemon yellow into here, which if this stays in focus, you can see it. I've also, where there was a lot of white in the trees, I've run some lemon yellow over that, just a touch, which has just given a sort of light green, dark green feeling to the trees. So gradually it's coming together and we'll see how it goes. Now this is the next day. And the picture's dried off quite nicely. There's the original. And there is my painting. I have to say about the original, this is printed off my computer. And I have to say that the pictures on the print, which is laser, are not exactly that on the computer. There's a hint of green in the sea. Um, in fact, it's actually a big bay, the photograph place called Akaroa. So we'll go back to painting now. I've finished off now, I'm not going to do anything else. I've detailed up the rest of the hills, touched up the clouds a bit, worked on the water. You probably noticed that we've got darker foreground hills, lighter background which is generally along the lines of what was on the original picture, simply because there was a lot of the trees on the front, it was a forest. So I've tried to capture the depth of the picture, and I'm very pleased with it. We'll see what it dries out like tomorrow. I'm going to sign it in a minute, and then that'll be it. Thanks a lot for watching, and I hope you found this useful. Just experiment with what you've got. And design your own style. I've watched lots of different videos, different styles, and I can't copy them. I pick little bits up from each, but I have to paint my own way because I have a vision problem, so with my glasses on I can see from about a metre away. When I take my glasses off I can only see from about four inches away. And there's this long gap in between, so I have to work quite close up with the detail and then sit back and look at it as it dries off. So I've developed a style, I think, that suits me. You just have to develop your own style. Think what, what causes your problems and then find a way around it. That would be the best bet. Oh well, good luck with your own paintings. Thank you for watching. Bye for now from me, Robin.